हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर राजकुमार कंसल्टेंट पर्मोलॉजिस्ट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इनहेलर्स एंड यूज इन द प्रॉपर टेक्निक सो एज यू गैस अवेयर ऑफ इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द टाइप्स ऑफ इनहेलर एंड द राइट टेक्निक टू यूज द इनहेलर टुडे आई एल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द बेनिफिट्स एंड वाई वी हैव टू एम्फोसाइज मोर ऑन द use of the proper technique while using the inhaler so right now we'll be going into the first inhaler which we have talked which is a dpi which is a dry powder inhaler so as i've already demonstrated to you guys in my previous video how to use that and what will be the composition and what will, how the device and how the capsule is going to look so as we see this is a dry powder inhaler so the drug will be accumulated in a capsule in a powder form and then we have to use a small device to puncture it and then we have to inhale it so as you are aware of it it requires lot of effort from the patient side which is like respiratory effort his inspiratory effort has to be so much so that he can inhale the powder into his lungs so as we know that is in the powder form which is uh, in a very uh, sm small particulate form but it as it the powder has to reach to our uh, smaller airways we need to as in the patient has to put lot of effort to breathe in then only that molecules which are generated through that uh, inhaler device are going to reach the smaller airways so whereas in elderly people who have uh, uh, you know weak muscle strength and then who have emphysematous lungs for example in the copd patients their inspiratory effort is going to be very minimal so those potential amount of energy required to generate that small particles that can reach the smaller airways is very less in those patients so dry powder inhaler is usually advised to avoid in the patients who are like elderly copd patients advanced respiratory conditions like with uh, fibrosis and uh, terminally ill patients where the respiratory effort is very less yes in the younger generation of the people who are adults like from 18 to 30 35 years of age yes can be prescribed but before prescribing we have to ensure that inspiratory drive and the effort are good so that that molecule can reach the smaller airways then going into our next uh, method and next inhaler which we have emphasized more on the nd which is the introduced inhaler as i've shown in my previous video i've emphasized on the technique to use uh, the mdi inhaler along with the spacer so why it is uh, necessary to use along with the spacer so as we all are aware of so there is going to be a chemical component that will help to propel the medicine from the canister into the patient's mouth so Uh, majority of the patients who have used the MDI will be aware of that the moment you press the inhaler, we are going to feel some cold effect in you know behind our tongue on the hot palate. That chemical which is used as a propellant is going to cause that. So there are instances because of that cold, there will be refractory bronchospasm. So it is very least likely, but there are cases where because of that cold effect. patients will have refractory bronchospasm and the second thing as we are aware of as we don't know the technique we'll just keep it in the mouth and then we'll immediately press it and then we will exhale it immediately because we are not aware of the correct technique so the molecules which are being uh, aerated has to go inside instead they will be coming out through our nostrils outside which is we which we usually see in our daily basis so now comes to why it has to be with the spacer so as we are all aware of there will be a 5 cm transmission tube one end will be connected to the inhaler and the other end is in your patient's mouth so as we are all uh, aware of that the once you press the inhaler the molecules the drug which is support will be released into the trans spacer which is a transparent tube so here first thing we can avoid is that cold fan effect which is not going directly into the patient's uh, mouth to cause a refractory bronchospasm and the second thing as the molecule is suspended in the spacer patient will have enough time to breathe in and to hold the breath so that the molecules which have been generated can reach the smaller airways which can improve the deposition drug deposition so the utilization of the medicine will be more when we are using it with the spacer third thing is going to be and then we have to hold the breath so similarly it will help in uh, increasing the drug deposition so this is very important to use the spacer whenever we are using the nda what is the disadvantage so the first first disadvantage is because it requires uh, majority of the hand and mouth coordination because the patients with the tremors with resting tremors with parkinsons elderly patients the hand and mouth coordination is very difficult so in those patients we tend to avoid using the nda with the spacer 
other than that any other patients who are capable of uh, having, having a good hand and mouth coordination it is always advisable to give an inhaler with the spacing and then second condition where uh, it is not actually a, a major drawback because it is a 5 cm tube uh, if the patient has to take it three times in a day that is very inconvenient because majority of the people are working uh, people so for them to carry the spacer and to take in front of their colleagues or in the, you know in front of their friends you know take out the spacer keep it so people feel socially awkward to use that spacer so nowadays we have predominantly very uh, good molecules which are available in the market where we can use it two times in a day before you go for your work and once you go for your uh, bed so that we can avoid so that is these are the two major uh, you know uh, problems where we cannot use the space as i told second space second uh, thing is only a social stigma but it is always advised to use your inhaler with an mda second third type of inhaler which we have discussed is syncope Synchro breath. So here also same thing. Instead of spacer, instead of uh, pressing the inhaler, so it will be already pressurized. And once it will be, the name itself suggests synchro breath. So once you inhale deeply, so that uh, MDA is resumed in such a way, so that will release the drug. So here again we required a very uh, good inspiratory effort and uh, handle coordination is also required, but it is less compared with the MDA with the spacer. so these are the three different types of inhaler so uh, we go from west to the you know uh, least uh, comfortable thing so comes the first thing comes is the mda with the inhale, with the spacer second thing comes the syncobel third thing comes the dpi so dpi when we can advise so as i have already told for any patients who are come with the post viral post infective bronchitis where we are not going to use the inhaler more than 2 weeks or maybe a month so such patients yes when provided their inspiratory effort is good so those are the population where we can advise dpi but whereas in a chronic respiratory conditions such as a bronchial asthma copd and an emphysema so those are the patients who will be depending on the inhaler for quite long we can say year maybe two years for copd patients it will be a daily uh, dependent so for those uh, particular group of patients with the chronic respiratory conditions remember always to use your inhaler with the spacer okay so i hope with this we have uh, made our point very clear so it is always better to use your inhaler in the form of mdi with the spacer see you in next video thank you